you have your Bibles this evening, I would like to ask you to please turn to the book of Romans. I'd like to read from Romans chapter 4. I want us to continue our study tonight. We've been looking at some of the men in the Bible, some of the saints of God that have, uh, the Bible has identified some very important teachings that they, that God blessed them to give us, or they have been a great example and they had characteristics that stand out as being very amazing and we need to pray that God will help us to develop some of those characteristics in our lives. And I was thinking as I have been studying about the different saints of God and reading about some of the statements that God has made about them, some of the very complimentary statements that God has made about some of the saints of God, I thought about, I wonder what God would say about every one of us. I wonder what God would summarize our lives, like he summarized some of the people of God in the Bible and tells us some great things about them. I pray that God will help us to live in such a way that uh, what God would say about us would be similar to what he said about some of the other saints of God in the Bible. Romans chapter 4 tells us about Abraham and among other things Romans chapter 4 and verse 16 the last phrase in Romans 4 16 says that Abraham who is the father of us all he's talking about Abraham being the father of the faithful those that walk by faith and those that live by faith it says Abraham is the father of us all and when you begin to read and study about Abraham and the tremendous amount of faith that Abraham had, I think that that helps us to understand why he would be called the father of us all. If you have faith in God, if you're trusting in the Lord, if you're depending upon God, if you believe that God will take care of you, and if you believe that God will do everything he says he will do, uh, then you should have strong faith, and you're the children of Abraham. We're not children of Abraham because of our blood lineage to Abraham, but we're children of Abraham because of our faith in God. So I pray that God will help us to think about Abraham. The Bible says Abraham is the father of us all. Then reading in verse 17, the word of God goes further to describe some of the great things that Abraham did. Beginning in verse 17, the word of God says, As it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations before him whom he, whom he believed, even God, who quickeneth the dead and calleth those things which be not as though they were. Who against hope, this is what Abraham did in verse 18. That Abraham who against hope believed in hope that he might become the father of many nations, according to that which was spoken, so shall thy seed be. God had promised Abraham that he was going to have a son. Abraham and Sarah were old, they were past the age of being able to have children. And yet Abraham, the Bible tells us, Abraham still believed that promise that God gave them. Now Sarah doubted. And Sarah insisted that Abraham go into Hagar, and a child was born, Ishmael. But that was not the son that God had promised to Abraham. Uh, Abraham uh, and Sarah were going to bring forth a child, and that was going to be the only begotten son of Abraham. So the Word of God says in verse uh, 19, And being not weak in faith, that is Abraham, being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body now dead, and his physical body wasn't dead, but as far as him having reproduction ability, his physical body was dead. And uh, uh, he considered not his own body now dead when, the, when he was about 100 years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. He didn't think about, he didn't worry about the fact that he was past child, the ability of the, of the age to be able to have children, nor did he consider that Sarah was past the age of being able to have children. The Bible says in the next verse, he, Abraham, staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God, 
and being fully persuaded that what he had promised he was able also to perform. Abraham believed God. Abraham trusted in God. Abraham knew that God had the power, which he did. God had the power to bless Sarah to be able to conceive and bring forth a child. It was a great miracle. The birth of Isaac was a tremendous miracle uh, that God gave to Abraham. God had made Abraham the promise, In thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. And Abraham believed God. He didn't consider in his old age when he was 100 years old. He didn't consider the fact that he was past childbearing age or Sarah past childbearing age. But he believed God. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief. He still believed that they were going to have a child. And they did. They had a child just as, as God had promised they would have that child. So one of the things about Abraham that I think is amazing that I hope that God will help us to be uh, that strong in faith that even though everything that medical science would say is impossible, that we know that God is able to do anything. God can heal people that the medical doctors say can't be healed. God can perform miracles today just like he has always performed miracles. And we need to pray that God will help us to believe whatever God says, that God will help us to believe that and stagger not at the promises of God, but believe all the promises of God. The Word of God is full of wonderful promises from God to the people of God, and we need to pray that God will help us to believe those promises just like Abraham believed the promise that was given to him. Now go to Hebrews chapter 11. The Word of God tells us more in Hebrews chapter 11 about Abraham. All through the New Testament now, the Word of God repeatedly talks about Abraham. It tells us what Abraham did. It tells, about, it tells us about the great faith of Abraham. And in Hebrews chapter 11, beginning in verse 8, the Word of God tells us again about the faith of Abraham. And that's the reason again that he's called the father of the faithful is because of the tremendous amount of faith he had. Verses 8, 9, and 10 tell us a particular way that Abraham had great faith in God and that faith in God resulted in him obeying God. Hebrews chapter 11 beginning in verse 8. The word of God says, By faith Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should after receive for an inheritance, what's the next word? Obeyed. I'm telling you, brethren, there are many things that God commands us to do, the many things God tells us to do, that it takes faith to obey and do what God says. And so God called Abraham to go out. He called Abraham to get out of thy country and from thy kindred and from thy father's house. That's what he uh, called on him in Genesis chapter 12 to do. He called him to go out into a place which he should after receive for an inheritance. And Abraham obeyed God. <clears throat> By faith he obeyed God. And he went out not knowing whither he went. He did not know where he was going. He didn't say, Abraham, you leave this place and here's where you're going. He just said, I'll lead you. And God did lead and guide Abraham. The Word of God talks about how Abraham went out looking for a city which hath foundations whose builder and maker is God. God promised Abraham he was going to have that and Abraham believed that promise just like he believed the promise that he was going to have a child in his old age. Abraham believed this promise. We're reading now Hebrews 11 verse 9. By faith he, that's Abraham, sojourned in the land of promise as in a strange country, dwelling in tabernacles with Isaac and Jacob, that's his son and grandson, the heirs with him of the same promise. For he looked for a city which hath foundations, whose builder and maker is God. Abraham believed God. Abraham left everything. It's amazing as you go through the word of God, it's amazing how many times that the most faithful and most dedicated men and women of God have been called to leave something that was very, very important in their lives. God called Abraham to leave his kindred and his family and his land that he was familiar with, to leave his home and he went out and 
He didn't know where he was going. God called Moses to leave Pharaoh's house. He had been raised in Pharaoh's house. He had to leave Pharaoh's house and all the riches of Pharaoh's house. All through the scriptures when Jesus called his apostles, follow me. He called them to leave what they were doing and to go and follow him. It takes a tremendous amount of faith to do what God called you to do. So Abraham went out and he obeyed God. And he went out not knowing whither he went. Come down to verse 17. Here's another example of the tremendous faith of Abraham. And to me, this is the greatest example of faith in all the word of God except for our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ. Look at Hebrews chapter 11 coming down to verse 17. The word of God says, By faith Abraham, when he was tried, offered up Isaac and he that had received the promises offered up his only begotten son. Now remember he had waited. He had been looking forward to the birth of this son. And then after Isaac was born, then God told him, Take now thy son, thine only son Isaac, and offer him as a sacrifice. The faith of Abraham to take Isaac up and to offer him as a sacrifice is a tremendous example of the kind of faith we need to have in our lives. Verse 18 says, Of whom it was said that in Isaac shall thy seed be called, accounting that, here's what Abraham believed was going to happen in verse 19. Accounting that God was able to raise him up even from the dead, from whence also he received him in a figure. Abraham believed that he was going to take his son up there. He was going to offer his son on that altar of that sacrifice. And he believed he was going to kill his son. And then he believed God was going to raise him from the dead. Now that you don't, you don't ever know how to figure out what God's going to do. But Abraham had faith and he believed in the power of God. And he proved his love for God. He proved his faith in God whenever he took his son up there and offered his son on the altar. So Abraham is one, one of the greatest men in all the Bible. He's one of the great men spoken of in the Old and the New Testament. He's the father of us all. Another individual I want you to think about for a few minutes is Caleb in the Old Testament. You remember Caleb and Joshua were two of the twelve spies that God, that God told Abraham to choose out twelve men to go into the land of Canaan and to search it out and to see that it was indeed a land flowing with milk and honey. So there were twelve spies that were sent into the land of Canaan and when they came back ten of the twelve spies said it is a land flowing with milk and honey but there are giants in the land. Look at the scripture. Back up in your Bibles, if you will. Back up and read about Caleb in uh, Numbers. Turn in your Bibles to Numbers chapter 13. Numbers chapter 13. Caleb, and, and, and I, I, I was hesitant to either concentrate on Caleb or Joshua. Uh, but, but I felt led to concentrate on Caleb rather than Joshua. Now, Joshua was the one that led them into the land of Canaan. But when, we, when, they were, when those 12 spies were sent into the land of Canaan, it was Caleb that, that took the lead in standing up for what was right. They both did. Caleb and Joshua both stood up for what was right. They both said, we can go in and possess the land. But Caleb seemed to take the lead as he stood there against those 10 spies that said, we can't do what God's telling us to do. Caleb and Joshua said, we can do what God is telling us to do. So you had 10 cowards, 10 cowards that were afraid to do what God said. And then you had Caleb and Joshua that said, we can do what God is calling us to do. Reading now in Numbers chapter 13. We'll read first. Uh, Numbers 13 verse 27. Numbers chapter 13 verse 27. The word of God says, Then they told him and said, We came into the land whither thou sentest us, and surely it floweth with milk and honey. And this is the fruit of it. They brought back some of the fruit from the land of Canaan. Verse 28 says, Nevertheless, the people be strong that dwell in the land, and the cities are walled and very great. And moreover, we saw the children of Anak there. Now the children of Anak were giants. 
They came back and they said there are giants in the land and there are great walled cities. And even though it is a land flowing with milk and honey, and even though God has promised that he will give us that land, those ten spies said we can't go and take the land. And later on in this chapter they said we look like grasshoppers compared to those giants. Brethren, when the people of God are afraid, the enemy looks bigger than what it really is. And when the people of God are afraid, the people of God feel smaller than they really are. You and I as the people of God, we need to know that by the grace of God, we can be giants and we can defeat giants that we face just like David killed Goliath. Uh, Caleb and Joshua believed they could go into the land and possess the land. So the coward said we can't go in. There's giants in the land. Listen now to Caleb in verse 30. We're in Numbers chapter 13 and verse 30. The word of God says, And Caleb stilled the people before Moses and said, Let us go up at once and possess it, for we are well able to overcome it. In spite of the fact, and Caleb saw the great wall cities. Caleb saw the giants in the land. Caleb saw everything the other spies saw. But Caleb believed in the power of God and he believed that God would give them the victory just as God had promised to give them a victory. Just like Abraham staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief. We find here that Caleb is not staggering at the promise of God. He believed that what God has promised, he's going to perform. And he says, we are well able to go in and possess the land. Then the, the, the cowards began to speak. The rest of the people began to speak more and more negative things until finally the vast majority of the people said, we can't go in, and they turned back. But, but Caleb and Joshua continued in the next chapter. They continued to plead with the children of Israel. We can go in and possess the land. For the sake of time, we'll just come down to verses 8, 9, and 10. We're in Numbers chapter 14 now. Numbers chapter 14, verses 8, 9, and 10. The word of God says, if the Lord delight, this is Caleb and Joshua now, speaking to the children of Israel. If the Lord delight in us, then he will bring us into this land and give it us a land which floweth with milk and honey. Only rebel not ye against the Lord, neither fear ye the people of the land, for they are bred for us. Their defense is departed from them, and the Lord is with us. Fear them not. But all the congregation bade stone them with stones. Stone who with stones? Who were the people wanting to kill right here? They wanted to kill Caleb and Joshua. Let's just kill them. Brethren, the people of God need to be like Caleb and Joshua. We need to be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. There will be many times in our lives that God calls on us to do things that are to get too big. They are. They're too big for us. But with God, nothing is impossible. We need to pray that God will help us to be like those people of God. You turn to Joshua just a moment. Joshua chapter 14. Now this is 40 years after the children of Israel rebelled. They went back and they wandered in the wilderness for 40 years. And in Joshua chapter 14... Joshua has led them now into the land of Canaan. You remember the first city they came to when they entered the land of Canaan? What was the first city when the children of Israel, under the leadership of Joshua, what was the first city that they came to? They came to Jericho, the great wall city around Jericho. And the word of God told them to march around that wall city every day. I'll tell you, brethren, it was a great miracle that God performed. God caused those walls to fall down. And God gave the children of Israel victory over Jericho God gave them the victory just as God had promised he would do and then in Joshua chapter 14 the word of God tells us that Caleb had been promised by Moses that Moses had promised Caleb when we get into the land of Canaan evidently Caleb had said there's a mountain there that I want when we get into the land of Canaan and that mountain was called Mount Hebron and so now in Joshua chapter 14, Caleb is telling Joshua, I want that mountain that Moses promised me I could have 40 years ago. So here he is now, 85 years old. Caleb is 85 years old. 
and yet he makes a statement, I'm just as strong now as I was before, and I'm asking you to give me the mountain, and I'm going to go in, and I'm going to defeat the enemy in that mountain. I'm going to win the battle by the grace of God, and I'm going to take that mountain and dwell in Mount Hebron. Look at the scripture now in Joshua chapter 14, beginning in verse 10. Joshua chapter 14, beginning in verse 10. The word of God says, And now behold, the Lord hath kept me alive, as he said, these forty and five years, even since the Lord spake this word unto Moses, while the children of Israel wandered in the wilderness. And now, lo, I am this day fourscore and five years old. He's eighty-five years old. He said, yet, as yet I am as strong this day as I was in the day that Moses sent me. As my strength was then, so even so is my strength now for war, both to go out and to come in. Now therefore give me this mountain whereof the Lord spake in that day. For thou heardest in the day how the Anakims were there, and that the cities were great and fenced. If so be, the Lord will be with me me then I shall be able to drive them out as the Lord said and Joshua blessed him he blessed uh, Caleb and Joshua blessed him and gave unto Caleb the son of Jephunneh Hebron he gave him Mount Hebron and uh, he gave him that mountain for an inheritance and then the next verse says verse 14 Joshua chapter 14 verse 14 says Hebron therefore became the inheritance of Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, the Kenizzite, unto this day, because that he, here's the reason God gave, it, gave him that mountain, because that he wholly followed the Lord God of Israel. Isn't that a marvelous statement for God to make in his word about a man? He wholly followed, he completely followed the Lord in all that God commanded him. Let me just mention one other person uh, in closing. Another great man of God is John the Baptist. Turn in your Bibles to the New Testament. Turn in your Bibles to Matthew chapter 3 just a moment. And John the Baptist was a great man of God. He was the forerunner of Christ. John the Baptist was the first person after Joseph and Mary knew that uh, Mary was going to have Jesus. Uh, Elizabeth met Mary and Mary told Elizabeth that she was going to have the Christ child. You remember what John the Baptist did? John the Baptist in the womb of, womb of Elizabeth. John the Baptist leaped for joy in his mother's womb. And John the Baptist was called by God. John the Baptist was a miracle. The birth of John the Baptist was a miracle very similar to Isaac's birth to Abraham because Elizabeth and Zacharias were old. They were beyond the years that they could have a child and yet God gave them John the Baptist and he was going to be the forerunner of Christ and then John the Baptist began to preach in the wilderness of Judea look in your Bibles at Matthew chapter 3 uh, beginning in verse 1 Matthew chapter 3 beginning in verse 1 where God said in those days came John the Baptist preaching in the wilderness of Judea and saying repent ye for the kingdom of heaven is at hand the brethren he's preaching something that had never in its entirety had never been preached before the doctrine of repentance was preached all the way through the Old Testament. But this idea, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand, is that second part that was new to the people of God. Repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. For this is he that was spoken of by the prophet Isaiah, saying, The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare ye the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. And the same John had his raiment of camel's hair, and a leathern girdle about his loins, and his meat was locust and wild honey. Listen, brethren, there was nothing about John the Baptist that was appealing to the eyes of people. There was nothing about Jesus. If you don't believe this, you go home and study Isaiah chapter 53. There was nothing about Jesus that was appealing to the eyes of natural man. All these pictures that you see of Jesus, Jesus did not look, they all are very appealing to the eyes of natural man. Jesus was not appealing to the eyes of natural man. Neither was John the Baptist. You picture a man with camel's hair, a leathern girdle, and he's eating locusts and wild honey. That's not a man I would want to follow, I don't think. But he was the man God chose and God sent him to go 
in exactly the way he went. So he went out and he preached, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Verse 5, Matthew chapter 3 verse 5. The scripture says, then went out to him Jerusalem and all Judea and all the region round about Jordan and were baptized of him in Jordan, confessing their sins. But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees come to his baptism, he said unto them, O generation of vipers, who hath warned you to flee from the wrath to come? You hear what he told a lot of the people that came to be baptized? He said, you're a generation of vipers. And then he told them in verse 8, Bring forth, therefore, fruits meet for repentance. John the Baptist was a man that had a tremendous amount of strength. He had a lot of wisdom. And whenever he refused to baptize those people until they brought forth fruit meet for repentance, that gives us a principle of the kind of person that is fit for water, water baptism. There are only two requirements for water baptism. One is, the person must believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. And the second one is they have to bring forth fruit, meet for repentance. And I pray that God will help all of us that every day we would examine our lives and see are we still bringing forth fruit, not just when we join the church, but every day are we bringing forth fruit, meet for repentance. What did Jesus say about John the Baptist? Of those that are born of woman, there hath not risen a greater than John the Baptist. Great man of God. And he went before Herod, after Herod had taken his brother's wife, he went before Herod and he said, it is not lawful for thee to have her. And brethren, the strength and the wisdom and the courage that John the Baptist had to preach what he preached and to stand where he stood is the kind of courage that we need in our lives today. I pray that God will help us as we, as you go home, I pray that God will help you during this coming week. I've had, I've had a good time studying about 15 or 20 other individuals in the Word of God. I don't plan to go back and preach all of those to you, but I encourage you to go home and study people in the Bible and look at some of the things that stand out that God was pleased with those individuals because of the way that they lived, the way that they acted, and the things that they said. But God bless his word to our hearts and us in our service to him.